Daniel, hi. Could you make me a woman? Honey, I'm so happy. The 1993 film Mrs. Doubtfire may feel like a long ways from today's evolution and ongoing debates over equality and gender identity. That moment there was meaningful in many ways, especially to people in the know, because we just saw right there Harvey Firestein on screen. The Tony Award winner has been at the forefront of this exact conversation in the arts and politics. Harvey Firestein, everybody. <laughs> His name is Harvey Firestein. Harvey Firestein, what are you doing here? I am here saving the day, damn it. I think we have to go to the next level. Latex. And the winner is Harvey Firestein. I am what? You're beautiful. Who would have ever thought that you would have developed into this gorgeous creature? No, Mark. Over here. Rebecca, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> and the 2003 Tony is awarded to Harvey <laughs> Firestein. And we are joined now by the stage icon himself, actor and playwright Harvey Firestein, four-time Tony Award winner, including for that role as the larger-than-life character in Hairspray. Firestein's memoir, which touches so much of those moments we just saw, is aptly titled, I Was Better Last Night, and The New York Times has described it as a warm and enveloping story still full of righteous rage. It is also on The New York Times bestseller list. Uh, congratulations, and thanks for coming back on The Beat. Anytime you know I adore you. So I would come anytime, but but uh, that that little those little clips. I feel like this. Do you remember that show? This is your life. I feel like at any moment, you know, this is your life. Gonna, like, gonna give me roses in a car. Well, I you know I remember that show. Uh, this is a different show. I mean, I know you're getting on in the years, Harvey, but you're you're on the beat. Not this is your life. I know. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. We've so, we've had you before. So, we've talked art, we've talked art and politics. Reading through your memoir, there's so much. So we could start anywhere. But I, let's start with you at the forefront of this whole conversation that people are still learning about uh, around the world today, which is gender identity. Uh, we saw the clips of you there dressed different ways. Um, what were you pushing up against, even in the world of Broadway, let alone the rest of the darn world? Um, as you were coming up? Yeah, well, our, my generation, I'm going to be 70 in June. <laughs> so my generation, the whole, our whole battle at the beginning was sexuality. We somehow had to take on the, um, what they call the majority heterosexual world, which I no longer believe is the majority. I've been around long enough. I don't see it so. But we had to take on the majority heterosexual world and let them know that gay people were just people, just as normal as apple pie. We had the same needs, the same everything. It's just natural. It's part of nature. And that was our battle. And that battle, we fought and we fought. And we ended up winning, strangely enough, because of our battle for marriage equality. The people who thought we were trying to change your children and steal your husbands, they all of a sudden, when they heard about marriage equality, they sort of got it. Oh, they want homes. They want health insurance. They want to know that they can get a mortgage. When somebody dies, they want to know they can inherit something. That all of a sudden made us human. And that conversation was won, not in Florida and Texas, but the heat gets to those people. You got to understand. They got iguanas falling out of trees. So now this younger generation is now working on gender. All of a sudden, this question has come up. What makes a man a man? What makes a woman a woman? Something that 
people like Gloria Steinem have been talking about for years, but now the younger generation is putting all kinds of words to it that I don't know will stick or not, All kind, but they're asking questions and you never go wrong by asking questions. Human beings are very complicated creatures as much as we'd like to make believe that it's all simple, it's not. There's nothing simple about being a human being. And so this generation is asking questions that maybe you and I are not so comfortable with, but it's their right and they will take us to the future. I believe they will take us to the future. Well, you put that eloquently, beautifully with humanity. Um, no surprise given what you're good at, what you're skilled at. And then you think back to how art moves us. And anyone can nitpick any piece of art. Um, it could be Merchant of Venice. It could be Dante's Inferno. It could be Mrs. Doubtfire. There might you mentioned the new generation. There are people who might watch parts of that and think that they don't agree with the way something was portrayed then. Now, but it was then. It was quite much more radical then. Uh, I say that by way of introduction to uh, Torch Song. Let's take a little bit a uh, look at you there. I'm on my feet, Daddy. Yeah, in six-inch heels. With computers, the software goes into the hardware, and with people, my, the hardware my, my, goes... Uh, all this good food has just done me in. There's nothing I need from anyone except for love and respect, and anyone who can't give me those two things has no place in my life. What did it mean to portray this part of culture and identity uh, in film and stage for you back in an era where I imagine the response didn't break on blue or red? I imagine some of the response was quite hostile, period. What was really interesting, um, I never worried about that stuff. I lived my life. I was never in the closet. I, I had no idea there was a closet. I didn't, I didn't know that gay people were supposed to be sad until I started reading other people's work. The gay people I knew were all very happy. We were gay. We were aptly named. Um, but when Torch Song came to Broadway, I looked at that audience and it was 80 to 90 percent heterosexual and there were gay people there, but they sort of slunk in or they, they sort of came in with their collars up or they, they brought dates of the opposite sex um, and watched the show. And and it was dangerous. There was something dangerous. You could even then be arrested for being gay. You could lose your apartment. You could lose your job. You for being gay. It was dangerous. In 2018, 19, they revived Torch Song on Broadway. And I stood there and watched the audience. And here it was 80% gay and 20% straight. And they came in, nobody was hiding. Everybody was happy to be there and they owned the play. It belonged to them. It was their history. It was their life. It had nothing to do with me anymore. They owned Torch Song Trilogy and they laughed and they applauded. And then when the mother came out, the Ed Bancroft role that you just showed, and the mother came out and she came with her judgment, it was hysterical. It was 1982 again. They were scared in their seats and they were just sat back as she rails on, because I don't think anyone ever gets over the approval of their parents. I think we mm. all suffer that the rest of our life. So that was really interesting. Um, there were people who said that Torch Song won Tonys and all that because of AIDS sympathy. There were hateful people like that. There will always be hateful people. You can't run your life by hateful people. Look at these people. No. You know what they call them now, Harvey? They call them... <laughs> no, you said that. I didn't say that. Uh, they call them haters. Well... I watch these people and 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 I say this with all humanity. You watch them wearing hats that say make America great again. And my heart goes out to you, you can't go backwards. There's no backwards. No. There's no rewind. You, go, you can only move forward. To go backwards to say again means you're dead. It's over. You want to go back you want you I look at those people and to me they to me they look like night of the living dead they look like walking mm. skeletons in red hats because yeah. they can't do well, anything they're not making you're saying, anything new yeah you're saying something very deep uh 
Trump's Make America Great Again is stolen from Reagan, uh, who was a, you know, a B-movie actor who was trying to be a John Wayne. And you think about the influence of art, Gil Scott Heron, uh, who was, like you, important uh, throughout that era, um, although he's not with us anymore, talked about Reagan as a kind of a fictive John Wayne desire to go back to a, a time that never was for America. And, and you see that tapped in in certain right-wing movements. Um, you talk about the update. I want to show... Well, go ahead briefly, but then I want to play something. Go ahead. I just, I just want to say, every single antique dealer in the world will tell you how to become rich. Sell people back their childhoods. People mm. want to buy back the simpler moments in their lives. They want to buy back happiness. So a penny toy that they had when they were a kid, they go into an antique shop, see it for 50 bucks, and they'll pay the 50 bucks for that memory. Of course, you want to, everyone's scared of change. Every, exa everyone's scared yeah. of change. But can't live by fear. Yeah. You've got to you're live. You're making me think of and living You're making me think of Rosebud at the end of of Citizen Kane, right? <laughs> that's that's all he wants. All right, this is what I promised I want to play because our 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 team here found this um where you you got to listen to some of your songs here. You talk about the world evolving, updating. Let's take a look. I am what I am. You feel like you're living through progress? How does it feel? It's, it's very, once again, it's very different. When an actor stepped on stage in 1983 and sang I Am What I Am, it was a heterosexual actor playing the role um, who was supposed to be having sex with another heterosexual actor. Um, the chorus, which was supposed to be all drag queens, had two actual women in it. That's how scared they were to have just drag queens on stage. And, and uh, the time was so different. They were so frightened of everything. And there was, once again, the air of sexuality, of, of, of a danger in the air of Lakage. Now, RuPaul's Drag Race, these people aren't scary to anybody. <laughs> they, are, they are popular pop figures. They're not overly sexual. Their, 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 their appeal is this insane beauty, this, this idea of drag, which is not female. It's something beyond female. It's drag and it's and it's fabulous and it's and it's and it's wonderful and, and the world sees them now thanks to RuPaul's work as um they're artists and they're that people are having a great time and people you know who doesn't love Halloween so this is a Halloween taken to a daily basis but it's it's <laughs> it's, just, it's wonderful it's wonderful to see people I gotta say you have scared. yeah you have such a, a way about you uh and as you say, you, everyone has choices. We, Lord knows, as we look at the world and everything everyone's going through, that there is darkness, there's evil, and then you have to decide what to do about it and where do you find your light. You've clearly done that. The memoir speaks to that. I will tell you, Harvey, I don't think you know this on a personal note, uh, the very first time I saw you perform was your version of Tevye uh, in Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway. And it wasn't until then I didn't, I didn't even know you were Jewish. <laughs> With a name like Firestein. I'm kidding. I, I knew. I, you know what? I had I a. Gonna, you know what, Harvey? I had a. I had a. I had a hunch. I was in a diner a couple of weeks ago, and a guy <laughs> from all the way on the other side of the diner screams out at the top of his lungs, "It's Harvey Weinstein!" Oi! I bought different him dinner Harvey. to shut him up. <laughs> yeah, I said Diff cookie. Very different. You can visit. Him um, again. You can. Um, yeah, you know, not me. I'm going to give you the final, the final question, which is, in a sentence, if someone just listened to all this and says, okay, but you know what? They say they're still old fashioned and this all seems like it's going against their view of nature and tradition. Uh, what do you say to them? What do you say to them about having an open mind or understanding this differently? How do, how do you put it bottom line? If you make those kind of judgments about people, you'll never know the people in your life because you're surrounded by all kinds of people. They're just there. My childhood, we grew up 
I'm much older than you, of course. Look how young and cute you are. Um, we grew up with this brotherhood idea that we're all the same and we all hold hands, you know, and some of the kids dressed with Mexican hats and some is Russians and some, and saying we're all the same. And it's not true. We're all completely different. We're all magnificently unique. And why don't we appreciate each other for that? Why can't I say, I love you for your uniqueness. Please love me for my uniqueness. My brother's not exactly the same as me. No two people are exactly alike. We're like, we're the snowflakes, if you will, as they already call us. We are all completely different. Why not embrace that? Why not say, I don't need you to be the same as me. I don't need that. I need you to be you i'll you appreciate me and accept me for who i am as long as i don't hurt anybody and i don't hurt you and i will do the same for you and let's all see what's possible because being all the same doesn't mean there's a tomorrow being all the same doesn't mean anybody comes up with a new idea you have we need the people who think differently we need the people who see the world differently they are the ones who open the doors for tomorrow and i love change scares the heck out of me but i love it because we only get better and better unless you're Putin, because he can't grow anymore. If we get him some vitamins, maybe he'll grow. So a comedian said on TV the other day, it was John Oliver said, showed a picture of Putin and said, if he was just four inches taller. <laughs> Uh, Harvey, uh, around the world and back, uh, with a jab at Putin uh, at the ending, a uh, fitting. Uh, Harvey Firestein, thank you for being here, sir. Thank you for having me, Ari. You know I adore you. Keep telling the truth.